All right, super excited to have you guys here with me. Um, been getting a lot of questions about uh, how to start and build a clothing brand, right? How to build a t-shirt brand from the ground up. And so wanted to talk a little bit about this program that we put together called the Brand Launch. Um, so in this webinar, what you're gonna learn is basically how to launch your first product and build your t-shirt brand from the ground up. Now, who is this webinar for? Anyone that wants to start a t-shirt brand, right? Maybe you want to start a side hustle, get some extra income. Uh, maybe you are an aspiring entrepreneur. Maybe you're a graphic designer. Maybe you're already an entrepreneur or some sort of creative. That's who this webinar is for. Now, a lot of you guys may not know who I am. Uh, my name is Devin Lars, and for the past 15 years, I have been helping building brands and helping them grow. Now, I run an agency called Curio based out of Oakland, California, where we help our clients connect with their audience on and offline. So online through digital marketing, advertising, how to uh, basically take your current clientele and grow it and to be able to establish relationships with them and be able to launch different products and then also offline products. So actual physical products. So from T-shirts, branded items, uh, things of that nature. Some of our clients include Nike. So every time Nike basketball does a project in the Bay Area, uh, we do all of their production and we've been doing it since 2015. Uh, another one of our clients was Tesla Motors. Uh, we were doing all of their um, warehousing staff swag. So anywhere from hats, hoodies, sweatshirts, pants, aprons, T-shirts, all kind of stuff, all of their, their promotional items and branded goods. Um, also Criminal Minds, we printed for them for the past, I believe, five years. Their last season just wrapped up. Um, and it was a, a really good pleasure of working with them and kind of building with them and helping them grow, doing all their product for their staff, uh, and then also all of the actors and actresses on the show. Another one of our clients was Kevin Durant. So when Kevin Durant was on the Warriors, uh, the, the first year that they won, everybody kept calling him soft for leaving OKC. And so when they won the championship, they kept calling him a cupcake. So what we decided to do is put a ring instead of a cherry on top of the cupcake and kind of lean into the negative press and the energy that he was getting. Um, he wore this hat and it completely broke the Internet. It was like the number one trending thing on Twitter. Um, it was everywhere. Right. And so that's what I mean about connecting on and offline. Right. Taking some sort of offline product that we build and develop and then creating some sort of online conversation, branding, things of that nature. Another one of our clients is Starbucks. So we do a bunch of stuff for Starbucks. Um, this is Rosalind Brewer on the right. Uh, she is the COO of Starbucks and one of the shirts that we designed and produced. So this was really cool to um, kind of see her, you know, the number two person in one of the biggest companies in the world, um, wear some of your product and support your company and agency. Um, super dope to, uh, to be a part of that. Um, also, this is uh, some stuff that we did for Steph Curry's basketball camp. Every time that the Warriors do different basketball camps and lead different basketball camps, we do a lot of their promotions, giveaways, uh, branded items, T-shirts, hoodies, things of that nature. So this was a project that we did for them. We also have a partnership with the Chase Center. So anytime uh, artists come into town, what we like to do is curate custom gifts for the artists to kind of give to them as a thank you for performing at Chase. So it's a partnership that we've been doing for um, for a while now, and we've done a lot of different artists. And this was one of the projects that we highlighted specifically custom for uh, Logic. Now, I've been doing this for, again, for the, the past 15 years. We've had the opportunity to work with some really, really cool clients, uh, some really cool people, um, and, and also be able to kind of like share the knowledge and kind of build relationships with not only companies and agencies um, and different clientele, but then also some celebrities and also be able to build and help with the next generation and giving back and kind of talking about my story and how we got into the business and things of that nature. So most recently, we did something for uh, a big project for Starbucks where they did a leadership conference and they got over 12,000 um, partners, basically they're all their store managers in the U.S. and Canada and brought them to a leadership conference. Uh, and we printed a shirt for every single Starbucks employee um, that was on there, every store manager and every single store manager got a T-shirt. So that was really cool. That was a, a really cool accomplishment that we were able to kind of work with such great companies and develop and grow and build with them and then also su to support their initiatives. So it's not just like T-shirts, right? We do all kind of different promotional uh, um, promotional items, branded products, things of that nature for not only companies, but also brands, right? Again, we work with some of the biggest brands in the world. And I think now with 
nowadays with social media and with the way that the internet is set up and everything like that, we always see the glitz and glamour of things, right? We see the end result. We see, we see the byproduct of the work that was put in, but not a lot of people talk about the process, right? And I think that's so, so, so important because it wasn't always like this, right? I wasn't, I wasn't always working with these big companies. I wasn't always working with um, um, these different artists and celebrities and stuff like that and being able to help grow and, and to provide a, a, you know, a, a clothing brand and to do all these different things. It didn't start that way. So what I think is super important for this process is to kind of take it back, give you guys a little context to exactly what it is that um, how we started, uh, how we came up, how we did it. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. I don't want to spend too much time talking about my story, but I think it's very important for you guys to understand because I think what you guys will see is a lot of maybe similarities in my story with with where you are in the process, whether that's you're just starting and, and, and you don't really know what to do um, or you've started the process and you keep getting stuck. Uh, I think there's there's some bits and pieces from my story that you can get. So it all started here. Right. And, you know, I, I, if you've seen anything or heard anything about my presentation, you know what this guy meant to me. Um, this is my grandfather. This was, you know, my hero. This was my inspiration. This was the guy that pushed me um, to follow my dreams and to chase what I wanted to um, and, and always believed in me and said I could become anything that I wanted to. Now, I know what you guys are thinking because uh, I'm, I'm going to just say it and get it out of there. Yes, I was an ugly baby. <laughs> I was looking at him like he was about to kill me. But you can see the look in his eyes. He, he, he really... Um, looked after me and, and, and really appreciated. I don't know if any of you guys have a person in your life, you know, that believes in you, a person that you look up to. Um, but if you do that, you know, that was one of the people um, in my life. And that was the person for me. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't a good student. I wasn't a good student in high school. I kind of messed up. You know, I, I was like, just I was lost. I felt like I was a lost student, almost didn't graduate. Um, but I was living with my grandfather at the time. Uh, and he ended up um, letting me start my first business in his garage. My best friend started airbrushing, and I remember I would go over to his house every day after school and watch him airbrush. And I would I would ask my grandpa, I was like, hey, you know, me and Darren want to get into business together. Can we get some airbrushing equipment? And he said, yeah, I'll buy it for you. So he bought it for me. I ended up uh, graduating high school and, and, and starting my business, actually starting the business in high school my senior year in 2005. And so we started this business, right? And this is this is from the early days, right? This is from the beginning times of what we were doing. And as you can see, number one, I, I don't know why we chose to airbrush that picture of Bart with his butt out, but it was something that you know we thought was uh, <laughs> was going to give us a lot of attention. That was my car at the time. Um, in the center was my graduation party. Uh, the the picture to the right of that was my mom's car. Um, and that we airbrushed um, this. Uh, my mom said it looked like crackhead Bugs Bunny because he looked like he was on some crack. <laughs> and then we would just airbrush a bunch of stuff. It was like a picture of Dora the Explorer, some Mac Dre shirts. If you're from the Bay or understand anything about Bay Area culture, you know how big Mac Dre was around that time and how everybody was was rocking that. So that was something that we did. Uh, but in the center was my business card, right? This is my first business card. You know, this was when MySpace was big, so we were promoting our MySpace. Um, we had our cell phone numbers on there. You know, um, you know, shirts, pants, shoes, hats, paint car, and motorcycle, and helmets, hoodies, jacket, etc. That was, that was what was on the services of our business card. And as you can see, like I literally went to Kinko's and pulled up. Um, I think it was like paint or whatever it was, and then just put these you know, put this thing together in like two seconds. Uh, but we didn't know what we were doing, right? We didn't have any guidance. We didn't know anything about business. We had no idea really what the heck we were doing. So I remember specifically, though, there was one project and this opportunity that we had to do some stuff for this big artist, right, to do a custom shirt for them. And I remember I was super, super excited. It took me like nine hours to get this shirt done. I was super excited. And then I had the opportunity to actually show him and gift him the shirt at one of his signings. And this is the project that I did, and I'm showing him the shirt. Now, I don't know if you guys can tell who that is on the shirt because I can't really, but it's supposed to be Rick Ross. <laughs> now, if you know what Rick Ross looked like, he don't look like this. And the funny part is I'm just holding the shirt, showing him, trying to get a reaction, right? And it's just silent, just silent. 
I'm like, dang, I can't even get on, <laughs> right? And so I give him the shirt, and he just kind of looks at it, and he's just kind of like, he doesn't even say anything, right? And so uh, I remember I left, and I, I was real nervous because that was the first time I've ever, you know, been in front of an artist or try to do something for an artist. And if you guys know, being a creative, when you put your work out there, you get nervous, you know, what people are going to say and stuff. And back then, I don't know how I didn't see that this was – horrible and that I shouldn't give it to him but you can even see the dude in the red polo in the back like what the hell is this he really gonna give that to him <laughs> and so I remember I left and I came back after the line had died down and and, and he had left and man this fool and bought up the shirt and just left it on the on the table you know I was like you know this is like I spent nine hours on this project right so I was just stressed I was like man I'm like why am I doing this this is stupid and, and I remember my business partner, my best friend that I started the business with was like, yo, let's just keep going, man. Like, let's just let's just keep going. Like, you know, it's part of the process. We, we're going to learn. We're going to develop. So we kept going. We, we started passing out flyers. We started to, you know, network. We started to go out to every single event. We would put our cell phone numbers on the back of our T-shirts and our hoodies. We would go pass out flyers. We were everywhere. We tried to be on the scene. Um, this was even, you know, really before we were really good at airbrushing, we just wanted to go out and just like we knew that marketing was important, right? Getting the word out, getting the messaging, um, even if we weren't the best airbrush artist, it was about that. So we started to develop and we started to make some um, a lot of noise around the city, right? As we started to build up, we started to make um, people started to recognize us. And so we got reached out to by one of um, the reporters of the West Contra Costa Times, which was um, a big newspaper and it probably still is in the area. And they asked to do a write up on us. And so they gave us the, the, the front cover of the business section in the West Contra Costa Times. Now, this was in 2006. I had just graduated a year before, right? I graduated in 2005. So less than a year later um, or a year later, we, we were on the cover of the business section in the newspaper. Now, at the time, this was big. Right. This was big. The newspaper was a, still kind of a, a, a thing. Right. And so I just remember we were super excited. It was something that was like it, it got us excited to keep going. Um, we, we kind of evolved our skills from doing T-shirts and, and evolved into doing other projects. So doing room murals and um, cars and even a boat one time and motorcycles and all of these different things. And so I remember after the article came out, um, we got contacted by a guy that wanted to do a special project for Led Zeppelin and one of his role managers. And I remember I was, I was, I was living with my grandpa and I was just telling him about this project and he was super excited for me. He was like, man, this is, this is tight. Like you guys are, you know, you guys are actually doing it. You guys are making progress. I'm proud of you. And so it was like, it was a week long project. We were working on it. Um, this is the, the, the project right here. And, I remember the night before this had to be delivered, um, we pulled an all-nighter, right? We were going to have to pull an all-nighter. We were trying to scramble to get it done. And we were in the garage at my grandfather's house. And I was in the front room or in the dining room cutting out some pieces. My grandfather was in the front room sitting down in his, you know, in his favorite chair. And I remember it was about 1230 at night. And we were making a lot of noise. You know, we were listening to music. We had our compressor running for the airbrush. We were like, you know, we were in the zone. And I remember like telling my grandpa, do you, do you want us to like finish up tomorrow or, or whatever? Um, because I don't want to keep you up. And he was like, no, no, I want to see how this comes out. He's like, don't worry about it. So he got up and went into the back. And I remember going into the front room and, and, and telling my business partner to um, um, I, I remember telling my business partner, like, yo, like my grandpa is like a G man. Like my grandpa really believes in us. Like he really wants to see us succeed. And I told him what he said, and I, I just remember I said, I, you know, I, I don't know what I would ever do without him. And so I come in the house, and I'm cutting out these pieces, and, you know, I hear a noise in the back where my grandfather was. And I kind of was cutting out the pieces, and I kind of stopped, and I heard him coming down the hallway. And as he was coming down the hallway, I ended up hearing this loud, like, crash. And I remember I got up to go see what it was, and my grandfather had... had um had fell over and knocked one of the lamps over. And he was on the ground, and I said, Grandpa, what's wrong, what's wrong? He said, nothing, just, just help me up. And so I, I had to kind of, like, pick him up and bring him into the front room. And I ran in the garage, and I told my business partner to call 911, and I come back in, and, 
You know, they, they, they're, they're trying to call the paramedics on the phone with me. He's on the ground, rolling around. And, and it's just like a, a chaotic moment. And I remember, like, I, I ended up stopping and, and, and he made this, um, this coughing sound that, that I'll never forget. And um, he ended up taking his last breaths um, in my arms and, uh, and passing away. Right. He, he ended up having a heart attack. And I just I just remember at that moment, I was just so it just it, like if it, it was just one of those things where I just was not prepared for it. Uh, you know, I was 21. I, I you know, I, I I didn't know. I just I had no idea. It was one of those things that just completely knocked me off everything that I knew that five minutes I could be talking to somebody and the next five minutes they're gone forever you know and it and it it sent me into a dark place you know and and I share this story because you know some of you guys may have dealt with the same things right some of you guys may have um experienced loss maybe it wasn't this traumatic maybe it wasn't you know this abrupt whatever but maybe you guys have experienced something like that and if you have, you know, you know, you know where it sent me. It sent me in a place where I don't want to do anything. I lost all my inspiration. I ended up working this job that I hated. You know, I was paying these car doors for Toyota, which, you know, it it, it was it paid good, but I was miserable. You know, and my best friend ended up getting the job with me, and I remember as soon as we got the job, he was just like, "Dude, we got to do something different." And I was like, man, I, I man, I can't hear you right now. I'm not, I'm not trying to hear that. He's like, yo, like we got to do something different. This is not what we're supposed to be doing. And I was just in such a dark place that I remember I just couldn't hear him. I just was like, you know, okay, okay, whatever. And I remember one day, I, I don't know what it was, or I don't know what he said to me in particular that day or what I was feeling or whatever, but he said, like, we have to do something different, like he always does. And I remember I was just like, well, what do you, like, what? You know, everybody always says you got to do something different, but they never have any answers or solutions. And he said, look, we always wanted to start this clothing company. He said they, they offered this screen printing class at, at this community college that was next to us. You know, we didn't know nothing about screen printing. We were like, what the heck is screen printing? But we knew that was the process of getting images on T-shirts. And we knew if we wanted to start a clothing brand, we can't airbrush it. And so he was like, "Look, we could start an air, or we could start a, a screen printing business where we can print for other people, and we can learn, and then we could use the money to invest in our own brand." And I remember when he told me that it was like, at first I was like, oh, "That's that's actually a pretty good idea," <laughs> but like all the voices in my head, you guys understand what it is—the the, the voices that just tell you, "Ah, oh, you can't do this. It's gonna fail anyways. Why you even want to try it?" All those negative thoughts came rushing in my head. And I, I remember I just said, oh, let me let me think about it. I, I don't know. And I think it was later that week. I don't, I don't remember the, the details um, exactly if, if it was that week or that day or something. But it was recently where it was like right after that where my boss at the time called me in his office and he sat me down and he said, hey, Devin, um, I, you know, I see something in you and I want to promote you to team leader. And I remember just like thinking about this, right? And I told him, I ah, let, let me like I'm gonna I'll get back to you. He was like, look, it's gonna come with a raise. He was like, get back to me by the end of the week. So I remember going home, and I remember really thinking, and something about what my best friend had said to me that sparked some excitement about actually being able to pursue this 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 entrepreneurial venture again right and this 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 thing of being able to create and do your own thing and I remember I was at this like weird crossroad right because I was like I could sit here and and be comfortable and get this raise or I could take a chance on actually going for what I want to do right and I remember I was just like okay let me like let me really think about this and so as we were going to work the next day, 
or I think it was a couple days later, uh, my, my best friend was driving. And as we were, as we were getting to uh, work and we pulled up to work, I told him, look, like, let's go sign up for that class. And he was like, look, don't play with me. I'll turn this car around. I was like, no, nah, for real, let's go. And so he turned the car around and we went and we signed up for that class. Now, when I tell you this was one of the best days of my life, because I went from this deep, dark, just depressed place to actually having inspiration again. And we ended up getting in the, the class. You know, there was two parts to the class. There was a beginner part and an advanced part. Beginner is printing on paper. Advanced is printing on T-shirts. Somehow we sweet talked our, our way into getting into the advanced class. All the students, of course, were hating on us. <laughs> this was in 2008 when Obama was first running. So everybody had Obama T-shirts. So we would actually go outside of class and pick up business and then use the equipment in class to print the Obama shirts and actually establish our business with the school equipment. Now, we weren't supposed to do it. The teacher was like, look, I could get fired. But she allowed us to, you know, be creative. And, and you know, honestly, we, we ended up having to just pay her off. <laughs> but we didn't have no money. So we had to pay her off with like T-shirts. So we just kept giving her T-shirts <laughs> every time we would run shirts. And so I remember we would do this for a while and, and we would use the equipment and she would always say, look, you can't, you know, do this. I can get fired. And, you know, eventually the, the semester ended. Right. And, and um, it was it was summer. And I remember um, after school ended, we ended up started picking up some like accounts and, and selling into stores and stuff. And literally like right after school ended i got a call from one of the um the store owners and he was like yo dev i need 24 shirts by friday can you make it happen and i was like yeah for sure yeah yeah for sure we got you and i get off the phone and i'm like oh damn how are we gonna do this like we have no access to any equipment and we don't have any money to buy any equipment what are we gonna do entrepreneurship 101 you have to be creative and you have to work with what you have there's always a solution, right? This is, this is the key point I want you guys to take away, that if you are an entrepreneur, if you are going to be an entrepreneur, if you are looking to establish and build a business, you have to find solutions. You have to work with what you have. Of course, it would be better if you had a million dollars. Of course, it would be better if you had this equipment. Of course, it would be better if you lived in a different place. Of course, it would be better if your family had connections. Of course, it would be better if you had better equipment or a better computer. Of course, right? There's always going to be things that can be better. But the thing with entrepreneurship is you have to be resourceful and creative with what you have, right? That's, that's, that's prime example. If you cannot be resourceful, if you cannot find answers, if you cannot find solutions, especially nowadays with YouTube and the internet, you have no business being an entrepreneur. And so what we ended up doing is we went down to Home Depot. I got some wood, some clamps, and some glue, and I made this, a one-color, one-station press. <laughs> now, what I tell you, I thought I was we were the next Steve Jobs, like we just invented the iPhone. <laughs> I was like, man, we're going to be rich. And so we, we, we set up the press. And we print the first shirt and then we realize, wait, it's like wet ink on these shirts. How are we going to dry it? And so <laughs> we had to get creative again. And, you know, we ended up going in the backyard, um, getting some wood, coming in the house, loading up a fireplace, laying all the shirts in front of the fireplace and letting the heat from the fire dry the shirts. We were luckily we were using water based ink so we can do that. But it was funny. You should have seen us. We literally had all the shirts laid out in front of the fireplace, closed all the windows and doors and just sat there and sweated and watched them <laughs> shirts dry. And so we back up the shirts and we go to the store and, and we slam it on the counter. We're like, yeah, give us, you know, give us our check. We did it. You know, we were super proud of ourselves from just being creative and making it happen regardless of whatever was in our way. You know, and I remember he, he looked at the shirts and he pulled them out of the box and he stopped and he was like, He's like, wait, why do they smell like a campfire? Right. We didn't realize the smoke was getting on the shirts to make it smell like Smokey the Bear just took it off. <laughs> so we said, look, we got some Febreze. You want to Febreze it out? And he was like, nah, don't worry. Next time, just make sure these shirts don't smell like a campfire. Now, we ended up still getting 
the window display and getting um <laughs> getting <laughs> getting everything situated and getting our stuff in stores, right? And I just remember, you know, it was just it was such a crazy feeling because I was like, okay, if we really want to start this business, if we really want to build something, like we're gonna have to step our game up. Like we can't dry our shirts with a fireplace. And so we're like, okay, we need some equipment, but who's gonna be stupid enough to invest some money in into us, right? Who's gonna be stupid enough to um, give us some equipment? Because we were like, oh, we want to set up some equipment in our garage, and we put together a little stupid business plan. We didn't know what we were doing, and you know, nobody, everybody turned us down except one crazy person. And that crazy person was this lady, my mom. Now, to give you a little context, my mom has lupus, so she's been on permanent disability for as long as I could remember. And she didn't have any money, but um, the year before her mother, my, my grandmother had passed away, literally like a month after my grandfather had passed away. And she she left her a little bit of money. It wasn't a lot, but it was a little bit of money. And I remember telling my mom about this plan and this idea. And she said, I'll, I'll help you out. She said, you know, I don't believe in this plan, but I believe in you. And, and I believe that you'll figure it out. So in 2008, we ended up <clears throat> converting my garage into our manufacturing facility. We ended up turning my room into our office. Now, this is in 2008. To give you a little context, like... Facebook was around, but it was for college students. Instagram was not invented. Twitter was here, but it was like, you know, for tech people, right? It was only MySpace. You know, this is when the sidekick was big. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, like, entrepreneurship wasn't a thing back then. It wasn't like, it wasn't like how it is today where it's cool, right? Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everybody wants to have their business. People looked at us like we were crazy. Like, you guys aren't going to college. Like, you guys just came out of high school and you're trying to start a business. Like, what? You think this is going to work? So we were getting a lot of negative energy and a lot of negative, you know, feedback from so many different people. But we didn't care. You know, we kept ourselves positive in our bubble. We were in the garage. You know, we weren't in the best environment. Um, grew up in, in, in South Richmond, California. So if you are familiar with the area, um, let's just say it's not um, uh, the most peaceful place to uh, to grow up. Uh, as you can see in those windows on the garage, we had to black them out with some vinyl so nobody could see what we were doing in the garage. People th right, thought we were there cooking drugs or something because we would have all these bags coming in of shirts and people were like, what is going on? But we were figuring it out. We were working with what we had. We didn't have the best equipment. We didn't have the best, latest, and greatest of things. We had some really nice equipment, right, at now that we can work with. Um, but I remember it was so different than just what we originally had thought, right, what we originally had put together, what we originally, like, used for the school equipment, and we had to get adjusted. You know, we thought we were just going to get the equipment, and we were going to be rich, and it didn't, it didn't turn out like that. And that's what I really started to understand about, like, enjoying the process, right? It's not necessarily about the results. It's about the process of building, like, enjoying each step. You know, we all go to the point and, and get to these phases where we can't wait until the next thing. But we don't realize enjoying where we are now is going to help us get to that next thing. We're always chasing the next, the next, the next but until we understand and enjoy the process of working and building and growing, it's going to be very hard to get to that next phase. And if you do, you're going to miss the fun part. The fun part is growing. The fun part is building. The fun part is starting from the ground floor. You know, that's the fun part. Like, it's exciting. You know, now we're where we are in, in the position of where we are. It's super exciting as well. But looking back, you're like, oh, those were the good old days. Those are the good times. And so I remember like having to like rewire my brain for that because it was just like, you know, it was hard. It was hard starting a business. It was hard doing this stuff. And I was like, you know, just I, I used to tell myself all the time, just trust the process, trust the process. It'll work. It'll work. It'll work. And so after we got like our equipment, I remember we got like our first large order and I was super excited. And this is the order. <laughs> it literally said stay fresh and it had a picture of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And I think it was like, I don't know, 19 shirts. Um, and this was like the first order that we produced with our own equipment on our own. This was just it was just a, a proud moment because it was like going from, you know, just an idea to like then going to school and figuring it out to then like getting your own equipment and then producing your own product on your own. 
it was just something about that, you know. So we were in the garage for about two years, just building, growing, um, printing a bunch of stuff, printing for other companies, printing our own brand, um, and just learning the ins and outs of how all this stuff worked. Um, after about two and a half years, we moved into our first facility. As you can see, this is a little cleaner and more organized. Uh, we hired our first employee. Um, at this time, we were printing for Pink Dolphin. Uh, we were printing for a lot of different brands as well as our own uh, brand, right? And and building our own stuff and, and producing product and just learning about how to sell shirts and how to produce shirts and the different type of screen printing processes and what you need to do in order to, um, you know, do different collections and designs. And we were just learning and learning and learning and learning. And so we ended up like networking, right? We would go back and forth and meet people. We would go back and forth to LA and we ended up meeting a celebrity stylist um, that had um, a bunch of big clients. And I remember we just treated him like he was a celebrity. We would hook him up, give him free stuff, give him free gear. And we would go back and forth in LA and he started working with the artist and you know, every time we would go to L.A., he said, look, I want to I want to give the artist some of your some of your stuff. And so one one time in particular, we went to L.A. It was for BET Awards weekend and he was at the studio with the artist and he invited us to come over. And so we came over. We met the artist and his entourage and that artist was Chris Brown. And so when we met him, we met him and his whole entourage. Right. And the guy in the center, his name is Big Pat. That was his bodyguard at the time. And so I remember we went to the studio and it was like, it was crazy because, you know, we went from, you know, in the garage in Richmond and, and watching this dude on TV and hearing him on the radio and all this stuff to like him being in front of us and liking our product that we're showing him. Right. We did some custom stuff for him. Um, we gave him some of our brand. He loved it. He wore it. Um, but what I realized is like, Everybody was around trying to get his attention and it was so hard to kind of establish a relationship because everybody's trying to establish a relationship with him. Right. Everybody's all in his face talking to him and all this stuff. So we said, all right, we're going to take a little bit a, a different approach. Right. And another lesson in entrepreneurship, make yourself valuable. The more valuable you are to people, the longer they're going to keep you around and the more business you'll be able to get. The more value you provide, the more business you'll get. The more value you provide, the more business you'll get. So I remember sitting there in uh, the studio and I saw his bodyguard by himself on his computer. So I went and I started a conversation with him and I was just telling him what we were doing and, you know, this, this and this. And we had a service to provide for him and 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 which was screen printing. And so he was like, oh, you know, I want to get some shirts made. I got my my logo BB for life. I would love to get some shirts printed. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, I got you. Like, we'll we'll print your shirts for you. He was like, look, I don't you know, I don't have a big budget. I said, no, nah, don't worry about it. I got you. So we went home right after that trip and we exchanged information. We went home. And we printed a bunch of shirts, probably, well, probably like, we probably printed like about a hundred shirts and sent it to Pat completely for free. And in that shipment, we added some of our own products, right? Some of our brand. And so he was super excited. You know, every time Chris would pop up on TMZ or whatever, who was in the background wearing our stuff? <laughs> the big bodyguard. So it was f free publicity. Yeah, it wasn't the artist wearing it, but it was the guy right next to him and he was in the shots. And so we started to build a relationship with him and we started to build and establish a relationship. And we ended up um, just providing a bunch of value to him, like giving him free shirts, hooking them up. And every time we would go back and forth to L.A., we realized, oh, OK, Chris and I exchanged numbers, but he's busy. He doesn't answer the phone. But Pat does. So every time I'm talking to him, he's the bodyguard, right? He's the one that gets people next to the artist. He's the one that knows the schedule. He's the one that he's the one that that is a main component in this whole thing. So we started to build a relationship. Every time we would go to L.A., we would hit up Pat and he would put us right next to the artist. So he would put us right next to Chris. He would tell us where he's at. He would answer the phone. We started building, started to establish a relationship. And it got to a point where he told Chris, like, look, you need to check these dudes out like they're doing some dope stuff. And I remember one day, you know, we're, we're sitting at home. It was after we had got back from a trip and I get a call and it's from uh, it's from Chris. And I'm like, oh, he's probably, you know, pocket down me, whatever. And so I answered the phone 
And he was super excited. He was like, yo, what's up, bro? He was like, look, you know, I've been talking to Pat. You know, I want to do this collaboration. Um, I want to I want to do this collaboration project with you guys. And he started, like, telling me about his ideas and all this stuff. So I was, like, writing it down, like, in shock. Like, oh, damn, like, he really, like, he really wants to do this. And so um, long story short, we ended up building a relationship with him. We ended up producing this product, creating the product for him. And we did a couple full-on collaboration projects with him. We helped produce his own products and um, set some stuff up. And then we also did a bunch of other um, different products with him and established a really cool uh, relationship and started building with him. Um, The picture uh, with him with the maroon shirt was his Twitter icon default picture for, I don't know, for like a year. And that was the first collaboration shirt that we did. Um, The one in the center picture was kind of famous. That was a line that we were going to do. Um, The one with him holding up the trophy was when he won Best Male R&B Artist. That's our logo on the sleeve of his shirt. Um, And then that other picture is at his album release party for Fame in New York. I went out there and um, was with him during the, the release party. So it was just it was such a crazy experience to think about all this. And then building the relationship with him led to working with other people. That's a young Justin Bieber in the center, him wearing that stuff, 50 Cent, t Pain. Um, Trey Songz, Rick Ross, uh, Chris again with Bieber. Uh, and all this started from, um, you know, building a relationship and not being afraid to give stuff away for free and to establish a relationship and think long term. Um, and it was something that, you know, it paid off for us, you know, and it, it just kind of sparked the momentum. And at the same time that this was happening, that we were building our own brand. Uh, we were printing for other brands, too. So we were one of the first people to print for Pink Dolphin. So we did a bunch of stuff for Pink Dolphin. Their first celebrity was Chris Brown, which were these two products. This was like their first big, big celebrity. And um, and we got him the stuff. We took we took this picture um, of him with the jean jacket on with the shirt. Uh, This was at his house. We met up with Pink Dolphin, gave him the product, uh, took it to him. And that helped them kind of spark and, and, and get some traction around that stuff as well. Uh, then we were start doing a lot of stuff with uh, the Summer Jam out here. So we did like Summer Jam from 2012 to literally 2019. We just did in 2019. Every single year we print all of the Summer Jam stuff. So all the radio station out here, iHeartMedia, Cameo, Wild 94.9, we do all of their products. We produce and develop all of their streetwear team, all the stuff like that. Also printed for Haritos. That was the activation that they did in collaboration with the radio station. And we did that. We helped develop product for summer camps and school swag and different event concerts. This was something, a product that we developed. Um, Chance the Rapper ended up wearing it. A project that we did with Honda for Honda Stage. Um, basically, it was for their all their Northern California Honda dealers. Um, this was the project that we did with Tesla, everything. Now, my motto is to get something you never had, you must do something you never done. Right? That's my whole concept my whole philosophy in life. So we started a brand, which was our brand that we have been building out for a while called Doing Everything Different, right? Doing Everything Different just allows us to have some creative expression. It allows us to do different launches and different products um, and different do different releases. Uh, this is me and some of my team when we launched this campaign called Let's Be United. It was a time when, you know, the country was so crazy and it's been kind of just increasingly getting worse and We wanted to create a campaign to say, look, like we all want the same things at the end of the day. It's just we need to open up communication and have conversations. Everybody's, oh, this is my side. This is your side. Nobody wants to talk. So it's like, let's come together. Let's be united. So that was the concept of this um, campaign. We got the support from uh, Trey Songs, who we've been working with for a very, very long time. Um, And it just allowed us to invest into our product, right, and do different products and releases and different drops. Uh, We even opened up our first um, retail store uh, where we do like exclusive drops and stuff like that. But none of this stuff would have been possible if we didn't start here. (laughs) So the reason why I, I, I wanted to take the time to give you some context and share my story is because none of that stuff would have been possible if it didn't start with this shirt and me not giving up. Now, when you guys start something, it's going to be ugly like this shirt. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to you know, feel like, why am I doing this? It's just going to, it's, it's just not going to just click right away. And that's okay. It's not supposed to click right away. Like if you want to build something, if you actually want to grow, if you want to establish a brand, if you want to establish a business, you got to understand it takes time. You know, it takes time to grow. But, you know, who would have thought 
that, you know, a couple years later from going from this and giving him a shirt that he puts down on the table and doesn't even think twice to him actually wearing some of our product in his video because he wanted to wear it. Not because we paid him, not because anything. He wore the product because he genuinely liked it and he wore it. But looking back at when I did that first shirt, it just kind of is a, it's just a marker to say, oh, this is an accomplishment, right? So I just want you guys to understand that whatever it is that you're doing, just understand and know that it takes time. You know, from going from being in the garage and, and, and printing and not really knowing what we are doing to this picture right here it was a collaboration with Nike and the Warriors. Um, and we did an arena takeover where we did over 24,000 shirts for every single person that went to the Warriors versus the Lakers game. Like that just happened in just in, in, in about 12 years, 13 years. Right. So it takes time. So what I'm saying is whatever it is that you guys are doing, you have to be patient. You have to be patient. You have to believe in your ideas. You have to understand that it is part of the process to have those ups and downs and, and to understand that. And I just made it my mission. I think in 2012, I just I one thing that was really um, part of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to contribute was giving back to the next generation. So I started speaking in 2012, um, working with the next generation, working with a lot of youth, helping them start their businesses, talk to, you know, um, launch their ideas, launch their T-shirt lines, all these different things and kind of help them develop. This was something that we did a project with Chevron and the um, Junior Social Innovation Camp where I went and spoke, talked about my story, gave them some little, you know, some advice and stuff. And then we also um, printed their shirts. You know, Chevron created the design. We did all the production on the shirts. Uh, travel across the country, speak to thousands and thousands of students um, of just the importance of having your idea turn into reality and the concept of doing things different, right? Building out. And I remember a common question that I kept getting all the time is like, look, I want to start my T-shirt brand, but I have no idea where to start. And I understand when we first started, we had no idea, had no idea what we were doing, how to start. We didn't understand what screens were. We didn't understand. We didn't understand nothing. And so last year, my team and I said, OK, like, let's build something for the next generation to support the next generation of entrepreneurs. And we came up with the T-shirt business. Right. The T-shirt business is, is solely dedicated to provide the media, the education, the training the production, the manufacturing, everything that it is that you need in order to get started and launch a successful t-shirt brand, right? There's processes that come with it. A lot of people ask, I don't know where to get my products made. I don't know what best products to get. I don't know what sizing breakdowns to get. I don't know how to match my colors. There's so many different things that are involved that we learned along the way from being on the manufacturing side and being on the front end um, retail side of things and actually doing the selling of the final final product and then also doing the production behind the scenes of the product. We have an interesting and unique view of stuff that we've learned for the last 15 years of things that we've picked up and we are putting it into education um, and different items for the t-shirt business and to be able to give this back to the next generation. So what I ended up doing is I hand selected a few people from my agency from Curio to work on this project to make sure that this project was successful. So we got Vang Ha, who's content development. So he helps record content, helps record courses, helps record all of the um, content to help with everything. Sophia, who is our production manager. So she helps with managing production, managing orders, everything like that. Brittany, who's our content editor. She makes sure all of our stuff is, um, you know, all the content is edited and everything like that. Mike, who's our creative director, and Tristan, who does pre-production. So he helps with um, pre-production sampling, pre-production proofs um, to make sure that your ideas um, come to life the best way possible and make sure that you know what it is. Now, we created the brand launch package. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about what comes in that package and how you guys can get started with your ideas and launch your T-shirt brand and get started. So the brand launch package comes with 50 premium 100% cotton t-shirts, right? 50 premium 100% cotton t-shirts. We use the Bella Canvas 3001. So there's all these different colors that you can select from, 
right? So any type of color that you want, you see the ones that are available over here um, to the right and all the colors it's, it's available. Now this is a 100% combed and ring spun cotton t-shirt. Really, really nice, high quality t-shirt. So it comes with 50 t-shirts, custom branded with your design, right? So your design can have up to a three color print. So you can have one design with up to three colors in it. So you can pick 50 t-shirts from sizes extra small to 4X with a three color print, right? Each shirt gets individually fold and backed and you get free shipping anywhere in the US. Plus what you're gonna get is access, lifetime access to our online training. So this online training, I'll break it down, right? Cause I think the, the, the biggest thing when you go to get your products produced, right? You go to a screen printing shop, whatever, especially when you're getting started, there's all these different options. There's all these different choices. There's all these different things to pick from. But when you're just getting started, you have so many questions. You don't understand how screen printing works. You don't understand about all these different things. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to create an online training to get you caught up to speed. So, you know, you can go to a screen printing shop and a lot of times, you know, the people that you work with are going to get kind of frustrated with you or they're going to give you the short end answers or they're not going to really fully explain in detail the entire process. But we said, OK, why don't we create some training so we can go really, really in depth, provide any sort of resources, provide any instructional stuff. We can walk you through it, show screen shares, show the entire process step by step that you can't do in a 30 minute consultation or an hour consultation with the screen printing shop. So here's some of the stuff that you're going to learn in the training. So you're going to get the, the basics of screen printing. So screen printing 101, exactly how it works, step by step, how the whole process works. We're going to show you, break down the entire process of how films are made, how screens are made, how shirts are actually printed, the different types of inks, everything like that. Then we're going to talk about Pantone colors, right? Pantone colors are the universal system of matching colors, right? So if you go to, um, you know, uh, you get your hats made in, in China and you get your T-shirts made from us and say you want to, you know, you want to have the colors match. But and say it's a purple. You can't just tell them purple. You see all these different shades of purple just on this one color card right here. So if you don't want your purples to be different every single time, there's what they call Pantone colors, right? Pantone colors are basically just a universal color code, right? A number that you're able to give to uh, different um, manufacturers or whoever you're working with to make sure that you're not saying purple, you're giving them the exact purple color that you're trying to um, trying to do. So we break down Pantone colors, give you guys some resources, um, some resources where you can buy Pantone books um, on Amazon, where you can um, go and, and look at their website and, and color match stuff. We break down the entire process, how to make sure that your colors match every single time. Then we're going to talk about finding graphic designers. Another thing that's been a big thing is like people need help with designs. Maybe you could be a designer that, that have designs or you know how to design or you may have these ideas, but you have nowhere, no idea of where to get this stuff made. So we break down how to find good, inexpensive graphic designers, right? That can range anywhere from as low as $15. I mean, you could get real crazy. I mean, you could spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on design, depending on what artists and stuff that you get. But we show you ways of how to be able to get your brand and how to develop your concepts and ideas at a really, really, really affordable rate to be able to test it out and to build it out. So we're going to give you all the resources on how to find good graphic designers, what to look for, how to reach out to them, how to communicate to graphic designers to get and make sure your ideas come to life with exactly what it is that you want. Then we're going to talk about artwork preparation. So if you are a designer, if you do um, create your designs, we're going to talk about how to prep everything to make sure everything is all situated to be able to send to your manufacturers to make sure everything is good so you can prep the artwork to be able to send to us and make sure that everything is all situated. Then we're going to talk about art separations. This is something that you don't really need to necessarily um, do because this is the process that we're going to be doing. This is how we're going to separate the artwork in order to set up the screens. But we think this, this section is really important because it gives you some context to how the screen printing process works. So now you know how to set up your designs, how to look at your designs, how to create designs, how to communicate to your designers on um, setting it up to be able to, you know, how many colors is going to be in the design. It just gives you some context on how the process works. So you understand when you go into, you know, the pre-production planning of your collection, you understand how to set everything up. 
Then we're gonna talk about pre-production, right? So not only artwork separations, but what do we need from you to be able to send to us to make sure that your orders come out exactly how you want it, right? From sizing to, again, those PMS colors. So the Pantone colors is what you see next to those color boxes where it says PMS and it has a number. Those are color cards on a specific shade of these different colors, right? We're gonna talk about custom neck labels, how to, you know, the placements of your sizing of your shirts. Then we're also going to talk about social media, right? How to market on social media, how to build your brand, how to build a following, how to establish and grow and to build um, your brand. So inside the portal, uh, this is what you'll get. You'll get a dashboard where you can search everything. Um, each section comes with some sort of video resources, links to different resources, just packed with a ton, a ton of valuable lessons. Each module is broken down to where now when you click on the module, you'll see all the different um, sections within that module and how everything is all set up. So we wanted to make it really, really straightforward and provide so much value and go into detail of how the whole process works. Because again, the thing that I see with people that are just starting out, they ended up, they end up wasting a lot of money because they just simply don't know the best route to go. They just simply don't know their best route to go. So we wanted to break it down and provide an infrastructure for people that are just starting um, to leverage their ideas and to get started. Now, these are some comments from some people that have taken our online trainings before um, and that have you know kind of gone through it and launched their products and launched their ideas. This was actually stuff that they just went through the online training. This new production of us handling the production and actually producing the product for you is something completely brand new that we're taking on. For the last, I don't know, five, five, six years, we haven't taken on any retail clients. Um, we've only been working with big brands. So we've only been doing production for the Nikes, the Warriors, um, the Teslas, the Starbucks, um, all of those type of people. So we've actually built the T-shirt business program and carved time out of our schedule and our production schedule to be able to support upcoming entrepreneurs to develop their first collections and to be able to build and provide packages for them to not only launch their ideas, but to do it in a way that's going to be most cost effective and give them the training and the tools and the, the roadmap on what exactly to do um, that's going to help them be successful. So here's what you get. You get 50 premium, 100% cotton t-shirts up to a three color print, right? So the print could be up to three colors. Each shirt is going to be individually folded and poly bagged. You're going to get free shipping in the U.S. Plus, you're going to get lifetime access to our online training. Now, this is a total value of seven hundred and ninety seven dollars. Right. What we wanted to do is we wanted to put everything together in a bundle. Now, if you break it up and you, you know, purchase everything, you look at the line items, get setup fees and all these different things. We said, OK, how do we just create an inclusive price? So you guys know what you're paying. And it's the first package to get started to really be able to establish your T-shirt line. So this is what we're going to do. Instead of doing the $7.97, it's going to be only $4.99 plus tax. That's it. So you're going to get all of that for only $499 plus tax. Now, this is going to be a limited availability based on our schedule, right? Based on our production schedule. And once our production schedule fills up, we allocated a certain amount of packages that we can take on per month. But as soon as that stuff is filled up, we're going to close this out. So you're going to get all this stuff for $499 plus tax, right? Now, this is the thing. Let's do some math real quick, right? Let's just do some basic math of what this looks like. So say you sell each shirt for $30, that's fifteen hundred dollars revenue. So fifteen hundred minus four ninety nine is a thousand dollars profit. So not only are you going to get the four ninety nine back, but you're also going to make a thousand dollars. Now thirty dollars may be kind of steep, right, for a t shirt. So let's say we you sell it for twenty dollars or twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars times fifty shirts is twelve hundred and fifty dollars revenue. Twelve hundred and fifty dollars minus four ninety nine. $751 profit. So you're going to make the $499 back plus $751 profit. But let's just say $25 is too expensive. So you sell each shirt for $20, right? A quick 20. Just make it simple $20. You sell a shirt $20, 50 shirts, that's $1,000. $1,000 minus $499 is $501 profit. So you're going to make the $4.99 back plus a $501 profit. 
Now, do you think you could sell 50 shirts for at least $20? Think about it. Only 50 shirts for $20. How many people do you know that you think will support you and pay at least $20 for a t-shirt? A nice, high-quality, premium cotton t-shirt, individually folding bag. The presentation is going to be on point for only $20. Now, if you were able to do this, that's an 83.5% ROI, which is return on investment. Now, this is the easiest way to start, right? The very easy, simple to understand, right? You pay the, you, you have the fee, which is the $4.99, which comes with all the stuff, plus the training on what to do and how to set it up. And you get 50 shirts, you sell each shirt for $20, and now you're on your way to actually establish and building your t-shirt brand. You've generated some money, you've generated some profit, you could reinvest into getting more t-shirts, you can reinvest half of it in getting, getting more t-shirts. What I recommend is investing all of it into your business, whether that's into marketing, whether that's into um, you know advertising, whether that's into other products, whatever it is, because that's how you're able to grow and how you're able to build. So here are some additional services. <clears throat> this is not included in the 499, so these are just add-ons. Uh, there will be additional charges if this is something that you wanna do. Um, so we can do custom neck labels. So we can put your custom neck labels in the T-shirts. Um, that's an additional $7.76 uh, each shirt. Um, so that comes out to additional $187.75. If you just want that extra you know, professional where it looks like your T-shirts were completely made from the ground up, that is an option and availability. Um, is it necessary for your first order? No, you definitely could do it with the branded tags that are in there. But for those of you that want that extra level of professionalism, that service is available. <clears throat> also additional print locations. So if you wanted to do, say, um, uh, you wanted to do a print on the front and then you wanted to do a one color print on the back, that's an additional 165. So that adds a uh, $3.30 um, uh, to each print. So if you wanted to do a two color, three color, four color, five color, you get the idea. So whether you want to do a front print, which is completely included in the package, you can do front, back, whatever it is, and say you want to do an additional print location, whether that's on the sleeve, on the back, whatever it is, that's the cost. Um, that's the cost right there. We also have express production. So our schedule is filling up fast since we rolled this out and since we launched it. So standard production time is 20 to 24 business days. Right. So that's production time that includes shipping. So basically you'll get them in hands, which is included in the package in 20 to 24 business days. Um, and that includes production, like I said, and shipping. But if you want to do express production and you want to move your order up in line and up on our production schedule, um, you can get it in hands between 12 to 14 business days. And it's only an additional forty five dollars. So, again, let's recap what you get. You get 50 premium, 100% cotton tees, Bella canvas, up to a three color print, individually folded and bagged, free shipping in the US, plus lifetime access for our online training. That's a total of value of $797. You're gonna get it for only $499 plus tax. Now again, this is a limited time, limited availability based on first come, first serve. So <clears throat> if it's something that say, you don't have your design ready yet. Say you're still working on it. Maybe it's going to be ready uh, next week or next month or whatever it is. Once you purchase this package, you can start going through the training and everybody that purchases basically locks in their production slot. So even if you don't have your design ready to go and you want to go through the training, maybe you don't even have a design, right? But you want to do this. You're able to lock in your production spot. You're able to go through the courses. You're able to find the graphic designers from the resources. There's a bunch of stuff that you're able to do and your slot gets locked in and that's saved. So whenever you are ready, you could go into production right away. <clears throat> so here's some, some FAQs, right? Some frequently asked questions about this package that I get a lot. So can I print on multiple color t-shirts? So as long as your design is the same colors, nothing changes. Right. So if it's red, black and white. You can print on up to two different color T-shirts, so you can print on black shirts and you can print on orange shirts. So you can print up to two different color T-shirts as long as the design colors do not change. 
Um, another question, can I do less than 50 or 25 of one design and 25 of another? Unfortunately, no. This package is for 50 shirts, right? 50 shirts of one design. So you get 50 shirts and you get one design. Can I get a sample of the shirt? <clears throat> you can get a sample of the blank shirt with no printing on it, just the sample. If you want to try it on, see how it feels, see what the color looks like, you can purchase a sample for $25, which includes shipping. So they'll be um, on the next page or, or below this page. Um, you'll be able to see a link where if that's something that you want to do and you want to get a sample shirt, you're able to click on it, fill out your information, make the $25 payment, and then we'll ship you um, the actual shirt and the size and the color that you want. What about bigger sizes? So in the package, in the $4.99 package, that includes sizes extra small to extra large. Anything 2X and above is going to be an additional charge because it's more fabric, right? It's more fabric. So, of course, it's going to be a little bit extra charge. So I think it's $2 extra per shirt for 2Xs, um, 3 for 3Xs, $4 extra for 4XL. So it's nothing crazy, but there is more fabric, so the shirts cost more. Um, how much are the additional services? Again, it depends on which additional services that you want. The printed neck tags are a fee um, that you'll be able to go when you actually go to place your order. The way that we have the additional services is because we want you to understand the entire process first before you add the additional services on. So you pay the $4.99. You don't have to add any of the additional services. It's just the $4.99. Then when you go to place the order, we have our own platform that you actually go and place the order, which it's going to have you, you know, we walk you through this in the training, but it's going to have you um, select the neck tag templates that you want like we can design that um, we have a couple templates to choose from so we just need your logo it's going to ask you um, you know all of your your um, artwork files and all that stuff and then from there you can add on the additional services and make the additional payments if that's the route that you want to go but again like i said those are just for people that want to elevate their brand to the next level um, and kind of you know have a more professional look to it but this package without any add-ons is completely perfect to start and to launch a brand. Again, this is just for people that, that want to have that extra, um, those extra things on the shirts. Do you guys make our designs? No, we do not make your designs. This is the reason why we can get this for so cheap is because we want to give you the tools and the resources that you provide the designs, the design, the print ready files for us. We give you resources to get, say, if you have a a JPEG or a PNG file and it's not vectorized, we give you some resources on where you can get it vectored for super cheap for like $15. Um, we provide resources on where to go to get designers. If you have sketches, we do not do the designs. It would cost you way too much to have our in-house people do it. So we give you resources on where you can get them done um, for inexpensive and, and for good rates and stuff like that. So no, we do not do your designs. You need to have your designs ready when you come to us. But again, if you want to lock your spot in, once you purchase and make the payment, um, that locks your production spot in and it allows you to get your artwork stuff situated until you're ready to go. What if I have more than three colors in my design? That is not a problem at all. It will just be an additional charge per color, a di per additional color on top of the three. So say if you have four colors, that'll be additional charge. If you have five, six, seven, you know, based on that. So the first three from one to three is covered in the package, but anything above three, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. How long is this offer available? Again, this offer is available as long as our production schedule is open. So once our project production schedule slots fill up, um, you'll have to wait until um, some spots come um, come open. As of right now, we have a, a few spots open, but again, they're filling up pretty fast. And if you want to solidify your spot, if you want to get your spot on our production calendar, even if you don't have the artwork and everything ready, you can go ahead and make the purchase, get your um, production slot available. And then once you get all the product and stuff like that, we can go ahead and, um, and, and release your um, order into production. If I don't have a design yet, again, this is <clears throat> this is a question I get a lot, which is why I wanted to just make sure that I I, I broke it down uh, well enough so you guys understand. Uh, there's a lot of resources that we have within the course that you guys can go and find graphic designers, um, some that are really inexpensive, where you can get designs anywhere from fifteen dollars to um, <clears throat> you know a hundred and something dollars, $250. One of those resources is Fiverr. So if you want to be proactive and you want to go and you want to start looking into getting your design, go to Fiverr.com, which is F-I-V-E-R-R.com. So Fiverr.com is basically 
<coughs> excuse me, it's a resource where they have freelancers where you can go and you can um, basically put your ideas together and go reach out to freelancers that can turn your ideas into reality. In the course, we go in depth of like how to you know, communicate with a, a, a graphic designer, how to send them your ideas to make sure you get exactly what you want, how to build stuff out and, and to send it to make sure you get your designs exactly how you want it. So um, that stuff is all in the package. Now, a recap, what you're going to get, you're going to get 50 premium, 100% cotton t-shirts on Bella Canvas 3001. You're going to get it up to a three color print. You're going to get them individually folded and bagged. You're going to get free shipping in the U.S. You're going to get lifetime access to our online training. Again, that's a total value of $797. You're going to get it for $499 plus tax. Now, again, this is limited. So based on our production schedule and based on how much this is or how many orders we get in and how many slots get filled, then that's going to determine when it closes and when it opens. So if this is something that you've been thinking about, you know, it's 2020. If it's if this is something that you've been wanting to do for a while, if this is something that you've been wanting to launch but didn't know where to start, if this is something that you're looking at just testing it out to see if it works, you know, we broke down the numbers. You saw the numbers. You just got to sell 50 shirts for $20. And you doubled your money, basically. Now, even if you sold half of them for $20, you made your money back, right? You sell 25 shirts for $20, you made your money back. So we wanted to create something that allows you to test out your design, to test out your idea, to see if this is actually something that's going to work. We wanted to create a very simple plan to understand. We wanted to create a very simple pricing structure. We wanted to create uh, training to make sure that you're successful, you know, not just give you the product and say, OK, cool, you're on your own, but give you the support and the resources that you need to not only do some high quality retail production on your shirts and give you the the quality and production where you don't have to worry about finding a good manufacturer, but then also give you the training on how to sell those shirts and how to build your t-shirt brand. This is something that will allow you to test that. It gives you um, a roadmap of everything. So when you go through the training, you'll see it's very, very broken down and thoughtful on the entire process on how you set it up, um, what you should do, how you should reach out to friends and family, um, and different things like that. So if this is something that you've been thinking about, this is something that you're you know ready to get started on, you'll be able to either click on a link below. I think there's going to be some more information and um, click a, uh, get started. Um, it will go ahead and ask you to, um, to make the payment. You'll get your production um, You'll get your production slot filled, plus you will get instant access to the training so you can start going through the training literally right now. Like you could literally purchase this and start going through the training right now and then submit your order. If you have your design, you can submit your order tonight, you know, or today, whatever time you're watching this or whatever. Or you can submit it tomorrow or you can submit it in a month and, you know, however you want to set that up. Um, but you can start going through the training, getting everything set up and getting everything aligned. So. I'm super excited for you. I hope we get a chance to work with you. I hope we get a chance to turn your idea and your vision into reality. And um, with that being said, I will talk to you guys soon. If you have any questions, feel free to, feel free to reach out to us. And um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.